Hello, my name is John Spank, and welcome to my YouTube ch channel, Underground. I always talk about how uh, I came up with the title. I was, I was thinking about the Underground Church in present-day China and Iran, where the outpouring of the Spirit is just expanding right now. Uh, I'm not a scholar or anything, and especially after this video, when I, I talk about a few things, uh, I do this in... in Scripture, there's a seriousness to it. It's going to be probably the most, I would say, one of the most offensive videos that I've ever done. But I, I live in truth, and I try to do my best for, uh, for God. I, I never claim to be a scholar. I know a lot of people are going to attack me because I'm going to talk about Christmas and how, uh, the origins of Christmas, and. Uh, reasons why I don't really celebrate Christmas and give understanding to that. But the title of this video, and this is in a reference to a comment that someone had made and asked me questions, and, and I try my best, I love comments, and I try my best to answer comments through the scripture. Uh, the whole purpose of this is to motivate people to study the word of God. I am not 100% correct in many ways, and I've been called many things uh, in the past on some videos. I've even been called a, by someone an antichrist. I've been called foolish. I've been told I need to man up. I've been told many things. And it's just because people don't want to hear what I, I have to say. You can disagree. I do this out of obedience. I also do this uh, if I have understanding of something. Now, I'm willing to correct myself, which I've done many times on doing things as I learn, as I mature as a Christian. But I believe we're in the last days. We're in the last moments for the rapture of the church. And there's a lot of deception going on. But people realize we, we've been in deception all of our lives. And that's what I'm referring to. I titled this, None of the Things of This World. It's the title of the video. I start out with uh, John 17, verses 1 through 26. These words spake unto Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. This is uh, before uh, Christ came on the cross. I mean, gave his life on the cross. As thou hast given him power over our flesh, that he should give eternal life unto as many as thou hast given him. For this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I apologize, the cats are outside playing, so you might hear scratching on the door, and I got patches here, so the table might vibrate. He's over here scratching around, going crazy. I also apologize for my sinus trouble. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glor glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory of which I have with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine that they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known all things to whosoever that house given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they received them, and they have known surely that I have come out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are my, thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in heaven. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, and those thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, meaning the Antichrist. This is talking about the body of Christ, how he's come for us, and, and we belong to Christ as I belong to Christ. And he come to save us, but of course not the Antichrist, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy filled in themselves. I have given them the word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. For they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through the truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. That's the reason for this video. I'm about to give truth on some things. Need to pray I for these alone, 
but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, and they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me have given them, that they may be even one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be able to perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known me, but I have known thee, and have known thee, and have thee known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared it unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love where thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. I also use Romans 12, 1 through 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself, your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Be ye not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We're not to be in this world. We live in it. We're not part of it. And people will hate us. People are going to hate me, what I'm about to say, because they're of this world. And and, and they may go to church and things like that, but they're, they're too much of this world. And I got baby. She's mother cats. Come in here. I did this... Uh, I, I look at some of my comments and every now and then not. Sometimes I get ideas for videos uh, that I think people would want to hear. I have one Christian brother who's awesome. He, he always helps me out in many ways. Uh, he talks about me and praying. He's trying to uh, go to other people. And I could tell by his comments that he's, he's really uh, trying to live uh, good. I don't know how old he is. He's a young man, an older man. I don't I don't know. But his uh, he uses... Uh, I don't know how, how to say his uh, uh, channel or his subscription or whatever. His name here on the YouTube, it's at, at Weather, it's W-E-A-T-H-E-R-N-L-O-78. And uh, he made a comment about the Christmas tree uh, because his family has a Christmas tree. And and because I, I mentioned before that a church shouldn't have a Christmas tree in it. But I couldn't quite remember where I was getting that from because it's been a lot of years since I've researched about Christmas and I've lost all my notes. The, the storm that came through last year, and, and this whole house has been redone, and still, it's it's not done. Um, I don't even have water running right now at the moment. My house or gas heat. It's a long story. But I, uh, I wanted to answer this as best of my ability. So I researched a lot today. Actually, I started out with Deuteronomy sixteen twenty one through twenty two. Plant the a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to start that over. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Neither shalt thou set thee up any image which the Lord thy God hateth. And I'm about to go into the reason uh, for this. And, and I'll say this, adding it with that. You know, a lot of Christian churches... I, I talked to uh, one minister I like to listen to a lot, and, and I, I disagree with him on something, and that is uh, J.D. JD Farag. He, uh, he's a minister that, uh, he actually, he was talking about idol, idols today, and I'm thinking I'm, this is what I'm about to talk about. Uh, to answer the, the question that was given, given to me, it was about the Christmas tree. In other words, should we have a Christmas tree? Uh, he was commenting where I, I said in a previous video that it shouldn't be in a church. And a lot of people would, you know, have those in their churches. And a lot of Christians celebrate uh, Christmas. Now, I've talked to some people recently about Halloween. They understand we don't celebrate Halloween. But they're all about Christmas. And I'm saying that Christmas is just as evil as Halloween because it has nothing to do with God. And that's what I'm about to get into. As I say, uh, I do this lovingly. I'm probably going to have a lot of comments on this. And that's just... I, I'm not of, I'm not of this world, you know. Uh, I'm not perfect. I I I am blessed by God. I struggle every day, but when I when I speak, this channel is talk about God, where God's helped me in my life, 
And when I give on subjects, and I believe it's it's a truth about something, I'm going to give it regardless of whether people get offended or offensive. Because if people are offended, not willing to learn, then they're not of God. They're not of the true body of God. Realize there's going to be millions of people on this earth in the rapture who are very active in church are not going to be raptured. And when they find out later after the rapture, guess what? It's too late for them. And I know a lot of things are being taught that after the rapture, you come to know and reevaluate your life and you can be saved. No, it's not true at all uh, for the Gentiles. Uh, if you had the opportunity to hear the gospel, the only way I would say a Gentile saved during tribulation is if they've not heard the gospel. People have argued with me about that. I don't, I don't care. You argue all you want. Origin of Christmas. Yeah, a lot of this is taken out of Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, a lot of dictionaries. I made a lot of notes here, and I've uh, done a couple sources uh, of other uh, people have taught. So it's a mixture of a lot of things. I've gone over this. I've actually I've spent probably I started this six hours ago. So there's a lot I've been looking at. Uh, but the Encyclopedia Britannica, Origin of Christmas, I'm going to talk about Christmas tree and everything else in this. English term Christmas, Mass on, Chris, on Christ's Day, is a fairly recent origin. The earlier term Yule may have derived from the Germanic Joel or the Angel, Anglo, I'm sorry, Anglo-Saxon Jill, G-E-O-L, which referred to the Feast of the Winter Solstice, according to Hans J. Hillebrand in 2015. He's over the Encyclopedia uh, Britannica. Many of us have been led to believe that this deep winter celebration was based on the scriptures. It is a coincidence that the world over celebrated celebrations of this nature take place in the middle of the winter on winter solace. The winter solace is the time of the year when the Earth's axis tilts the farthest away from the sun in the northern hemisphere. Consequently, this causes the winter solace to be the lightest, the longest night of the year. After that, the days start getting longer again. This also officially marks the start of winter. Our Heavenly Father warned his people, Jew, Jewish people, for the Jewish people and later for the Gentiles, not to worship the host of the heavens, sun, moon, stars, etc. And what I'm about to get into, you're going to see where a lot of this worship comes from. Uh, I wrote Deuteronomy 4.19. Lest thou lift up thine eyes into heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and stars, and even all the host of heavens, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. So we're, we're not to worship these things, and uh, I will go into uh, uh, where we get this. But to understand Christmas, actually, I go back and I start with Nimrod. I know a lot of times they're like, what's Nimrod got to do with Christmas? I'm about to tell you. Nimrod is the, uh, was Noah. Then one of his sons, Ham, had Cush, and Cush had Nimrod. Now, I haven't got into it yet. Uh, I've talked in previous videos during the time of the Israelites coming into the Promised Land. There was like uh, 26 tribes of giants at that time. This is after the flood. There was pre-flood giants, and then there's post-flood giants. And how the giants came about in the incursion later, because um, there's—I I truly believe in certain areas in this on this world there's giants still, and people will call me crazy on that, but I have reasons for it, and I could give a video on that later and give some things out. But we start with Genesis chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. And Cush begat Nimrod, fathered him. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, in the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Eric, and Akkad, and Calneh in the land of Shinar. But the first one he meant, meant was uh, Babel, as in the Tower of Babel, which was a ziggurat. It was not going up to, there's been a lot of things put out there. And, you know, from what I understand, I do go with the theory of it being a, some type of portal thing trying to get their way into heaven. And God said it's capable. Of, they were mixing physical with the spiritual through some, some uh, rituals, and they were trying to uh, break through that veil. Veil, or how do you want to say it? And uh, I believe in the string theory, and I don't believe we've been taught all of our lives. The Big Bang, bam, they just created. That's how chaos, Hinduism, things like that. God spoke. 
meaning vibrations. The earth was created, like as it, you go with maybe like the string theory, where there's different uh, dimensions. We're in the fourth uh, height. My memory, I'm sorry. Uh, length, height, width, and time. But there, they say there's 11 dimensions of war, and I, I agree with that. Because once you get beyond the fifth, sixth, and whatever, and on up, you get into the spirit world. Some that's beyond my, I'm a simple man. And I know people are going to comment and may say things about me because I say I'm a simple man, especially when I'm talking about this. But uh, it is what it is. After the death of Cush, Nimrod took his mother, Samaris, as a wife. And Nimrod soon died. His body was cut into pieces and scattered throughout his kingdoms. Samaris taught the people that the only body part that remained missing was the male member. So he had gone to the sun. His name should now be called Baal, the sun god. She taught the people that Nimrod was the father of her unborn child and the baby was conceived by him through rays of the sun. For his presence of power to reign supreme, phallic symbols of fire should be lit to honor him. Supposed child of that union is Horus, Tamez, the reincarnate of Nimrod. Simrus claimed a full-grown evergreen tree sprang out of the roots of the dead tree stump. This symbolizes the springing forth of new life for Nimrod. On the anniversary of Nimrod's birth is December 25th. December 25th has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. We know we could go back and prove that Jesus Christ was born in September. I'm thinking around September 23rd. I could be incorrect on that. But he was born in September. He was not born December 25th. That was the anniversary of Nimrod's birth. And there's a court and you know, documentation on that. She said that Nimrod would visit the evergreen tree and leave his gifts under it. This is Genesis of the Christmas tree, the symbol of Nimrod. This equates to approximately nine months after Easter, or the date Ishtar became pregnant with Tammuz, Nimrod reincarnated. According to Tadzik Zan, in his book Only a Few, he writes, For centuries, Tammuz's birthday was celebrated with feasts, reverie, and drunken orgies. After the myth of Nimrod was taught, the incarnation started showing up in a number of cultures around the world. For example, the Babylonians had many gods. Their chief god was Marduk, which explains more in Jeremiah 52. Marduk was known by the titles Bel, Baal, or Lord Baal. The sun god is now everywhere. Some scholars have concluded, uh, I'm sorry, some scholars have also concluded that the Christmas tree may be a male phallic symbol of eternal life. The erections of such symbolism have been around for thousands of years. Ancient nations of Ethiopia and Egypt, an abundance of such phallic symbols, some are still standing here today. The ancients revered the sun, the obelisk, the obelisk, were constructed to symbolize a frozen ray of sun. Even today, we can go to the nearest graveyard and see phallic symbols in abundance. This was a way to pay homage to the sun god. Today, the tallest obelisk in the world is not in the land of Ham, such as Egypt or Ethiopia. Instead, it is located in the capital of the United States. This monument, held in place at the top of a pyramid, stands at a press of 555 feet. It's called the Washington Monument. Did you know that some of the most powerful and influential men in history have phallic symbols dedicated to them? Understand, the United States is not and never was a godly nation. God used the United States. God helped uh, our country. I put 21 years of my life. I wore two uniforms. I was in the Air Force and I was in the Army National Guard. Served overseas. Been overseas twice. I'm a combat veteran. Trust me, I, 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 I've done a lot, but I don't love this country. I understand. I love the people in this country, but I don't. I don't love this country because I, I know what the rep United States represents. You know, there's nothing godly about us. People lie to you and say it is, but it isn't. The, George Washington, do your research, was a 33rd degree Mason. The Masonic Lodge is throughout the United States. Of Mason, uh, United States. And for anybody listening to me who it belongs to say Masonic Lodge, you know where I'm coming from. Uh, Paul talks against secret societies. Why? Because they're evil and of Satan. The Masonic Lodge is of Satan. And anybody's part of it, because I had an uncle that was a minister in, of a church. It was part of Masonic Lodge. I'm totally against it. All right. I, I you know, I've, I've had people in the military I've served with. Uh, 
uh, belonged to Masonic Lodge. But that's the foundation of the United States of America. It was not uh, the freedom of religion. It was a lie that they went under. Uh, George Washington broke away from uh, the Masonic Lodge in England, came over here to start their own Masonic Lodge. The whole purpose was to New World Order. And it's always been that way here. All of our leaders, New World Order. Uh, it's just in your face and people just don't see it because they are in the dark. And the reason they're dark is they live for this world. Uh, that's the reason why a Christian, a body of Christ, will see more. We're sober-minded. We see things. Uh, God allows us to see things different. And people mock us and, and people mock me all the time. Mock all they want because God shows me. And so through the Holy Spirit, that's how I'm learning. And so I see these things different. And I am different. Let me get back where I'm at. I lost my train here. Okay, so... Might have to re reorder some of this. I don't remember where I stopped at, and I apologize. Oh, yeah. Direction and similar. Even when go to near. Okay. Some scholars have also concluded the Christmas tree may be of male. Yes. I hate that. I'm going to do that. Some scholars have concluded the Christmas tree may be a phallic symbol of eternal life. Erection, some symbols, I read over this again. Some are still standing today. Asians revered the sun that Elblex were tried to symbolize the frozen day. Even today, we can go to the nearest graveyard. Uh, I'm sorry. I apologize for getting messed up there, my, my short-term memory. But we talked about Washington Monument. Did you know that some of the most powerful influencers in history have phallic symbols dedicated? The cutting down of a tree has significant meaning. This signifies the premature death of Tomas. As a part of the custom, the people would cry and mourn for Tamaz. The star placed at the top of the tree most likely signifies the sun god or fire god, Saturn, Moloch, Marduk, Rephem, etc. The star also be a representation of Simris herself. One of her symbols was an eight-pointed star. The pagan worship of stars, sun, moon, and other planetary objects have been popular since ancient times. Simris is known by many names around the world. Some of these names include Mother of God, Ishtar, Easter, Astoreth, Atar, Astareth, Astart, Asheron, Anna, and Isis. She is the goddess of fertility, love, war, sex, and power. Her symbols include eggs, owls, fish, doves, pole, and tree stump. And the star, usually the eight-pointed star in the Bible, she is described as the queen of heaven. The worship her was something that the god of Hebrews hated. This was preached at the mouth of, by the mouth of prophet Jeremiah. In ancient Europe and many pagan nations around the world, the worship of trees was very common. Trees played an important role in the spiritual lives of the people. The people have animistic beliefs. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, animism is the belief that all plants, animals, and objects have spirits. Remember, we were told Genesis by God, do not worship the creation, worship the creator. Uh, these druids and everything, that's what they do. They worship the creation. In Rome, Ajibua writes, The sacred tree of Romulus was found in form. This tree was worshipped throughout the age of Roman Empire, and its citizens thought the tree was drooping a who and cry went out, which was answered by citizens running with buckets of water as they were putting out a fire. In Northern Europe, the Germans tied fruit and attached candles to evergreen tree branches. This was done in honor of their god, Woden or Odin. A third day of the week, Wednesday, was named after this pagan god. These tree symbols, eternal. These trees symbolize eternal life to them. The Hebrews, we can read, committed abominations with the Asherim groves throughout the Scripture. There is usually a grove of Asherim near their altar or ba or bell. They would also decorate these abominations by hanging things from them. Talks more about that in Second Kings. Uh, the uh, Jewish people. Uh, a lot of times I couldn't understand, I mean, these people, I mean, don't they know that they're they're doing pagan things? Well, what we got right now, Christians celebrating Chris, Christmas, everything about it's pagan. Same thing, just what the Jewish people do and what the Jewish people got punishment for. Punishment for the Hebrews. Uh, the Hebrews of the old transgression, the commandments, when they followed pagan gods, they were taking part in Babylonian practice and worshiping of idols. They cut trees down on the winter solace and decorated them on our tamales. 
The Hebrews were routinely punished by God when they committed whoredoms by following pagan gods and profaning the Sabbath and other appointed dates, according to Jeremiah 10, 2 through 5. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it may move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. Let's talk about the, uh, the Saturnalian Sun God Festival. There are many wind winter celebrations throughout the pagan world. They have not gone anywhere. They are still with us today. Some of the most influential religions and rituals of pagan Europe have been soared by Christianity. The Catholic Church brought it in. I, I, I mean, I go to the extreme with the Catholic Church. Hey, Patch. It's evil. I have so many people I know part of the Catholic Church. I have a friend of mine who uh, was special ops in the military. And before he retired, he, he uh, did pastoral uh, for the Army. And uh, he's, he belongs to the Catholic Church. Um, I can't stress it, how evil it really is. And it, it's a lie. And our churches today, what we that's the reason why I stopped going to church. Uh, part of it's because of my health reasons. The other part, I was getting new frustrated because of what things were being taught in church. I walk into church and see a Christmas tree. That's an idol. And when you say try to talk to people about it, you're, you're mocked by people who are supposed to be people of God. We are to be sit down and, and not be led by our feelings. You know, that, that's the problem. We get led by our feelings. You know, I don't think it's not what you think. It's what the scriptures say. That's not what we think. The Roman Empire had a winter saw celebrated called Saturnia. Saturnalia, sorry, I'm trying to say that correctly, was a way to give thanks to their god, Saturn. This pagan god was truly influential. Even the day of the week we caught Saturday was named in the honor of the Roman god. Just like the planet Saturn was named after the Roman god. By the time this winter celebration came around, all planting was complete. Satur, Saturn, Alia was originally celebrated December 17th through December 24th. This was a time of great merrymaking. Social order was invented and the people indulged. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, Saturn's great fe festival of Saturnalia became the most popular Roman festivals. And December 25th was especially special. This day of climax became known as the Brumalia. According to Merriam Webster Dictionary, Brumalia was a pagan festival held at the winter solstice from which some features of the celebration of Christmas seem to have originated. During this holiday, public gambling was permitted. Slaves were allowed to take part in the celebrations, and they did not have to work. Colorful dinner, <coughs> excuse me, colorful diner clothes were permitted in public. The fearing cap or phileus, a felt cap normally worn by freed slaves, symbolized the freedom of the season in Rome. To symbolize the freedom, an ancient Roman citizen was selected to indulge in anything they so desired. This person was called the Lord of Misrule. A king for a day, the Lord of Misrule, was sacrificed on the final day of the altar of Saturn. This dramatic end to the, his short rule was a way to end the period of social disorder and return to normal. We hear that so much today. We're going to return to normal with all the stuff we're being taught. The Growing Influence of Christmas Undoubtedly, the worldwide celebration of Christmas today can be traced back to European domination of the world. Throughout Europe, various forms of similar winter solstice celebrations were held. In Greece, there was a celebration held to honor Dionysus. This god was identical to the Roman god Bacchus. Bacchus was a child of Jupiter, Zeus in Greek. According to Roman myths, Dionysus, the god of wine, grape harvest, included parties, festivals, royal celebration. Madness, chaos, drunkenness, ecstasy, and fertility. December 25 marks his birthday. The, least, the feast lasted for 12 days. These days of wild celebrations and excess reveling was called Bacchanalia. The days were marked with great feasts with included parades of naked women and public sex. The celebration has left footprints throughout the world. I'm sorry. 
This celebration has left footprints around the world in the form of carnival, bacchanal, or bacchanalia, and Mardi Gras. I'm going to talk a little bit about you, my little buddy here. Calm down. It's a little wild tonight. In Northern Europe, they celebrated Yule. This is where the majority of the Christmas traditions in the English-speaking world de derive their Christmas traditions, where we get our Christmas from. This celebration lasted for 12 days. As part of the festival, feasting revolvery were commonplace. Giant bonfires were also lit. The night where Yule was called Madurinit. I'm at Madurinit. Madurinit means Mother's Night. During this night, the spirits of dead women and female deities were honored. This is called Desire. Some of the traditions of Yule include the Yule tree, Yule log, Yule goat, Yule boar, and Yule singing, just in, to name a few. Yule tree became the Christmas tree. This tree was decorated around the winter solace. The men in the household would cut down evergreens from the forest and bring them into their homes. Families would light Yule logs, usually from the preceding year. They would eat, drink, and make merry until the logs burned out. If the log burned until mid-morning, it was considered good omen. This celebration honored Father Winter and Skadi, meaning Snow Queen, of whom the land of Scandinavian is thought to have been named after. It is believed that each spark of the log represents an animal, such as calf or pig, that would be born in the new year. The ham was important in Yule celebrations as a result of the pagan god Freyr. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, Freyr is a ruler of peace and fertility, rain, sunshine, and the sun of the sea god Najor. Freyr's mother is, the father, is his father's sister. The pig was sacrificed to this pagan god. The pagan god Freyr is said to ride around on a uh, boar by the name of Sonar. Excuse me, my science is strange. Sonar Galtar, which means atonement boar. Other popular traditions of winter solace include holy, mistletoe, and nativity scenes. The holy was a sacred plant for the Romans to their god Saturn. They also thought having the plant around them brought good luck. At this time of the year, the plant is at its greenest. They would tie this plant into a wreath and hang it up at the front of their houses as people would do today. The mistletoe is one of the major symbols of paganism. When paganism was the dominant religion of Europe, people would hang the mistletoe in areas where they congregated. The belief was that this plant had magical powers. They that thought the plant, among other things, would protect them from evil spirits and bring them good luck was also a symbol of fertility. As it was thought that the plant made people and animals more fertile, today this plant is viewed as sacred. Couples are expected to kiss at the meet under the mistletoe. Having nativity scenes is nothing short of adultery. An idol is a greatly loved and marred person, place or thing that is used to bring remembrance as a god. Oh, bring remembrance to God. The God of heaven, the God of Hebrews, hates idols. Through the second commandment, told the Hebrews, God, through the second commandment, not to make any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, according to Exodus 24. So, uh, starting conclusion, uh, it is evident that the winter solstice celebrations, Saturnalia, Kalida, Christmas, Yule, Catrum, etc., are all the same. When man was scattered from Babylon, the tradition of sun worship was exhorted around the world. It's one of the most pagan celebrations on the early calendar. Nowhere in the Bible were Hebrews, such as the Apostle Paul, seen celebrating the birth of baby Jesus, or anyone for that matter. Nowhere in the scriptures can any righteous Hebrew be seen exchanging gifts left under a Christmas tree. Nowhere in the word can a righteous Hebrew be seen eating abominations such as ham, because their belief wasn't uh, to eat ham. Now later... Daniel had a dream that you, you could eat him, but at that point they couldn't. As we enter into the season of dark celebrations, it's important to know what you truly are celebrating. As the Hebrew scripture states, My people are destroyed by their lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected the knowledge, I also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. And that's Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. We are covered by the blood of Christ. You know, that's my past, present, future sins. Uh, I'm a new creature through Christ. I'm learning. I'm growing spiritually. 
Doesn't mean I still don't sin because I fight with the flesh. But there are things I've learned that I've done in the past that I'm coming to understand I should not have done, and God knows that. So what I do now is what matters. It's why I consider, you know, I wrote a note, my last note here, importance of scripture and knowledge. Christmas traditions goes all the way back to pagan roots. It's all pagan roots. The exchanging of the gifts, the feasting, music, decorations, especially decking in evergreen in the middle of the winter are as pagan as it gets. The Jesus of the, Jesus of the Bible was never in Christmas. Uh, do I believe we should worship? I mean, we should have Christmas? Absolutely not. I don't believe it's a holiday we should we participate in just as much as I didn't participate in Halloween this year. Uh, now I'll know I'll go see I'll go see my family, and uh, I'll talk to them, and it's going to be a big fight. But uh, it, it's my responsibility to once I know something to teach, and that's what I do with my family and. and and my oldest son, he he doesn't even believe in God. Uh, and my daughter, uh, I was talking to her, so she had some questions and talked some stuff. It, it's frustrating because as a Christian, I'm with my family, and I know God and things of God, and they will not listen. Because they're too wrapped up in the, the world. You know, they care more about themselves. They care more about... I mean, today we, we celebrated my, my youngest grandson, uh, his one-year-old birthday. And that's something that I just touched about briefly. I was looking in my studies. I, I could have spent well over an hour on a video and not give myself time to talk. You know? But I mean, more into it. Actually, birthdays is nothing. That's pagan. We don't even celebrate birthdays. We should. And I know you're thinking, well, that's awful. It's well, well, birthdays, you make it your day, and it's not about us at all. Not even for a birthday. It's about God. And then people would attack me. Well, how can you say that? You know, yeah, because everything's about God. You know, every, everything's about God. We celebrate God. We celebrate Jesus. And that doesn't mean I don't love. And that doesn't mean I can't buy something and give someone a gift. You know, that, that's that's not the, come on. But uh, to do something like, you know, like Christmas, it's full of pagan rituals, you know. And I know people put out there, you know, a Christmas tree representing Jesus Christ and all that. So you know what? That's a lie. And those ministers that put that out, they're liars. And you can say, how, how would you say such a thing? Because it's, it's severe. Realize, remember when the Egyptian, I'm Egyptians, when the Jewish people, uh, were in the wilderness. They spent 40 years in the wilderness because of their disobedience. And as a young man, I couldn't understand why they're disobedient. I mean, what, what's wrong with these people? They see these miracles. The Red Sea was parted. They went through it. Why is it? Because they celebrated things. They did things. No, they didn't celebrate Christmas at that time. It came later. But you know what I'm saying? They, they had rituals. They did. They they, they celebrated things. They, they made it a calf. Uh, when Moses went up to... Uh, Get the Ten Commandments, and he was gone 40 days. What did they do? They had Aaron and his brother make a calf. And they went back to worship and paganistic rituals that they had in Egypt. You know, it's the same thing as Christmas. It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing the way we, we uh, had the holiday of Easter. It's paganistic. And if I say something to somebody, I guarantee I'm going to have a lot of comments. I'm going to have a lot of hate comments because I'm telling people the truth. We're not to celebrate Christmas at all. You're not supposed to have a Christmas tree. You're definitely not supposed to celebrate on December 25th. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to celebrate the birth of Christ. Nothing. Do it in September. Don't do it on the birthday of Nimrod. It was Nephilim. Abomination. You know, if you look back in the Hebrew, being a mighty hunter, it's more than just hunting animals. He was a cannibal. Go back and do your research. I made a video years years ago about not to be a cannibal because I was talking about some, uh, I forget what it was. Uh, there was an emergency and this plane crashed in the Indies. I think it was a soccer team or something where they, they survived by eating others. And you're not supposed to do that. You know, the stories of cannibalism were... 
And you look to say, well, you've not been in a, a situation. Well, I did survival training in the military. There were times I've been without. There were times I've taken out in the field because I lost so much weight. It's kind of hard to look at me that way and say it now. But I'm a fat old guy now. I wasn't then. And uh, I've done the uh, jungle survival training and different things like that. That's what I taught. And uh, there's ways to live. You can live off. You don't have to eat human beings. And if I'm in a boat and there's someone there and they die, I'll, I'll give them up to the ocean. I'm not going to eat them. It, it, you know, you can say you can say it's easy like that until you're in that situation, and that's true. Uh, a lot of times, you, you know, I get young soldiers and they talk tough, and then when you, when you, when you go out there and you're in, you're in the battle, then you see how tough they are. I've had I've had grown men. Uh, one of the guys I knew. Uh, we just had some mortar attacks and RPG attacks. And that night, because we're in that area, we were in that same area, constantly attacked. And I remember waking up to the sound of him crying and just visibly, visibly shaking and crying. And he was a tough man. Always threatened to beat me up, you know. But he never never tried, but he always threatened to beat me up, you know. One of them guys. And he was just shaking and crying like a, like a little baby because of what we've been through. And uh, it's horrible. So you could talk smack, as they say, but you don't know till till you're there and it happens. Um, I just know that if I'm in a survival situation, I'm not to eat another man or drink the blood of another man, human being. I don't do this video to be a jerk. I do this video because I spread the truth. And what I understand is the truth. A lot of people are going to debunk me because I'm going against what they've done all their life. You know, there's a lot of great men out there that, that are preachers and they have Christmas. They do stuff for Christmas. They give their sermons around Christmas time. But Christmas is not Christian at all. And I don't believe uh, a true, uh, someone who's a ministry should ever. I grew up in a church where we, we had a Christmas tree in the church. We I was up in the choir, and I did a nativity scene. It, for one thing, I always get this, you know, we, we do plays in church. You're not supposed to, church is a place of worship, not to get up there and play and do this and that. And all oh, the kids, you know, and they do this different stuff. You know, I, I did that as a kid, but reality, uh, no, it's not. You know, uh, we're to worship God, and it's about God, and what God can do to us and for us. What he does do this for us. And uh, and the problem is so many people are wrapped up in this world and don't realize it. And then when you tell them it's the flesh, it's the flesh that attacks. Those that are going to attack me, it's because of the flesh. Those that will mock me, it's because of the flesh. When, I, when I've, I've given you the knowledge of where Christmas comes from, which is the truth and fact, you can look this up yourself. It's easy. It just took me a long time today and wrote these notes, but it's easy. It's fact. None of it is, is, and what what the Christmas tree represents and everything. The people try to say Christ and all this. They're just trying to. That's like the churches that, oh, we don't we don't practice uh, Halloween, but we'll we do our whatever candy day or whatever, or we dress up like a dress up like a Bible characters. Well, you're still practicing Halloween, people. You're on, you're on that day, you're practicing everything with Halloween, whether you dress up like a demon or you dress up like a, uh, a shepherd or whatever, you're celebrating Halloween. And if you're a minister, be blunt, that's a disgrace. Call you out. Those ministers that push Christmas in the church, stop. We're not supposed to be doing this. They're pushing adultery. Severe punishments for this. You know, you're supposed to be a man of God, to be the man of God. I have friends of mine in ministry, and every single one I know of my friends in the ministry, they all do Christmas stuff, and it makes me sick. But I know if I go up to them and say, don't do it, guess what? They, they, they argue, and, well, that's not the meaning. Yes, that is the meaning. You're of this world if you decide to, to be a minister and, and do something like that. You're not of God. How can I say that? Because it's in the Scriptures. We, we've learned, you know, 
Learn that Christmas is not something we should be participating in. So don't participate in it. Well, my family be, or my relative, my mom, my brother, my sister, whatever. Next month, my daughter's going to want to have a Christmas. And then I'm not going to I already told her this year I'm not buying gifts. Not, I don't have the money for gifts. But if I, had, I did, I wouldn't. And uh, I've already heard it from my wife. You know, she's already been getting on to me about stuff. And I'm just like, whatever. You know, we're separated. There's a reason for that, unfortunately. But uh, it's, it is what it is. We're in the last days. The wheat from the chaff. This is it. You're for God or you're not. That's all it boils down to. You're going to worship God in heaven and walk from this world and walk from ways and the paganism and all the crap of this world. Or are you going to play God? You going to play church? You going to go up there and be involved in all this and, and call someone like me who calls out, oh, he's a fool. You going to play church? That's between you and God. I'm just I'm putting the truth out there and you decide what you would do. Now, would someone come up to you and say, John, I got a Christmas tree in my house, so I'm going to go to hell? No, no. You're saved by the grace of God. But we have, understand that we have uh, different rewards in heaven, and that's what it's about. Like in hell, there's different punishments. In heaven, there's different rewards. But the severe thing is this. Once you know something, before you were ignorant, you weren't, now you're not ignorant. Anybody who's watched this video now knows the truth about Christmas. So now you're not ignorant. So now you know the truth. So what are you going to do now? That's up to you. Uh, hopefully I haven't lost too many people on this video. And uh, I do mean it lovingly, honestly. I'm not the, the expert or trying to be a dogmatic person. I'm, I'm, I fail. This, this life I failed so much. And uh, my hope is strictly in God in heaven. Because if I didn't have a belief in God in heaven, uh, I, I told my son the other day, I'd be like some of my, my friends. I've, I've had a lot, of, a lot of soldiers I've been with and committed suicide. My commander, uh, three months after we got back, committed suicide. Uh, just no hope, no despair. It keeps me going. I deal with things. I deal with depression and things like that all the time. I have to deal with it. Uh, it's hard, you know. I've I've been it's been over 15 years since I've been in war, and I don't I never sleep a night through. I've never slept a night through. I wake up to things, and uh, I'm tired from it. I'm tired, but I keep going because I have my faith in God, not of this world. Thank you.